Otherwise, we've got a, a great meeting today. We've got a bunch of the folks from the, the village are going to talk about their various departments. Um, find, give them some time to have at it. So who gets to lead that off? I'll start out since I'm the resident Rotarian. Um, so hello, everybody. Um, I miss seeing you all at, at Rex's. I look forward to uh, seeing you soon. Um, I was uh, thinking about kind of a conversation that Sue McDade and I had, I think in mid-March of last year, where we were talking about, do you think this pandemic will last until May of 2020? And I think if any of us <laughs> thought it would be almost March 1st and we would still be in this position with the um, number of people who have, who have passed away, um, we would be pretty appalled. Um, so it's, uh, it's been quite the last year, uh, but I think um, the village has done a, a pretty good job responding to it. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about what's happened at the library um, since last March, let me start sharing my screen. Um, so, and I, I apologize for inflicting a PowerPoint on you, but it, it's my way of kind of keeping track of my own thoughts. Um, so just to give a, kind of a background, the library opened in August of 2019. So we were seven months in when the pandemic hit. And boy, by January and February of last year, we were really hitting our stride in, in the new building. It took us a few months to kind of get used to the new space and, and uh, it took a while for the public to kind of get comfortable in the new digs. But really by mid winter last year, we were, we were pulling 700, 800 visits per day. Our circulation was setting records. It was really going well. And then uh, and we every day we would have uh, scenes like this where we, there would be just throngs of people. And, and believe it or not, uh, libraries love people. Even though we're kind of introverted, we do love crowds, uh, especially when they're in our building. So it was really, um, the, the library was doing exactly what it was built for, which was serving a large segment of Wanaki and the surrounding area. And uh, it, was, it was going great. And then, screech, um, everything shut down in March. Uh, the, you'll remember the safer at home order and the first order from the public health department in Dane County shut everything down. Um, and the library, there was no staff in the building for about six weeks. I was the only one who would come in, me and the uh, maintenance crew. Um, it was very depressing, but there was no borrowing. There were no returns. There was nothing but online services. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about what those online services were in just a second. Um, finally, they allowed us to open for curbside services, and that started around May 1st. Um, by June, we were ready to reopen the building partially, so we would let people into the front of the building for grab-and-go service, and some, uh, some of the collection was available. And then by the summer went well, so by uh, fall, we opened up the entire building sort of, um, and that there are still places, there were still places that were closed off, like the children's play areas, no, not available or wasn't available. The study rooms weren't available. None of the meeting rooms were being used, uh, but people could go where they wanted to go and check out items. Things were going great. And then you'll recall late October, early November, there was the large spike in cases here locally. Um, we were set to write it out, but we did have several staff members who either uh, fell ill of COVID or had family members who fell ill and so were into quarantine. And so we pulled the plug and we went back to uh, curbside service and we installed a drive up window. I'll show you that. And then um, we wanted to get through the holidays because there was uncertainty about whether or not, you know, wh what travel would do, uh, but we were, um, ready to go in the new year, and we reopened on January 11th. Um, there are 19 public libraries in Dane County. We are one of two that allow people uh, access into the building unfettered, uh, not by appointment. Uh, Madison, Middleton, Sun Prairie, Verona, no, none, none of those communities are allowing people into their building. Um, and But I think that we've done it in a way that makes sense for us, is safe, 
and uh, respects the investment that Wanaki has made in its library in recent years. So that was very important to us. So when we initially shut down in March, we, everyone was working from home. Um, and the only thing that we could do was outreach online. And so uh, that gave birth to the rise of the online story time. And in April, uh, we saw, we started to do uh, twice weekly story times on Facebook and on YouTube. And we were astonished by how many people would, uh, would attend. Uh, we would get 300, 400 views, uh, live views uh, per program. That number has, uh, as the pandemic has continued, that number has gone down significantly, but especially in that first month when you really couldn't go anywhere, um, we filled a, a big need um, for the community. And that was really great to see. And Brittany Gitzloff, who's the librarian, uh, the children's librarian here at the library, she's pictured on your left. Um, she did an amazing job kind of pivoting to, uh, to online video. Um, so that was a, a, all of our adult programs have, have been virtual since last March. Um, and we're planning on keeping all of our programming um, virtual through probably into, into summer. Um, it kind of depends. Um, we tried everything we could to kind of maintain contact with our, with our uh, users. So we, uh, when we reopened for curbside service, we had personalized grab bags. So you could say, I like mysteries, and this is the type of author that I've liked. And we would go and we'd check out 10 items, put it in a bag and give it to you. Uh, we would drop it off uh, at senior housing. Um, it was just kind of, we wanted to maintain that connection. Uh, it was really important, especially April and May of last year, where people were really feeling isolated. Uh, that we could get items into content into people's hands. Um, we even did something as kind of old fashioned as if you call our, our main line and, and hit extension four, uh, we have a dial a story on our, uh, on our phone service. So if you're really pressed for something to do with a, a screaming toddler, uh, Brittany can read a story every month on the phone to your, to your family. So uh, anything that we can do to keep in touch with the people who, who need our services. Um, as spring, summer rolled on, uh, we kind of went beyond what was uh, available online. A lot of grab bag activities were uh, made available for our, our, uh, our kids. So uh, crafting kits, art supplies, um, all of those things were made available. Uh, these are things that we typically do in programs in a normal year and that's not available. So we uh, switched to the uh, kind of the take and go um, model of programming. And then anything that we could do to um, help each other out in the community. So we had booking around Wanaki, which was a, um, a scavenger hunt where people had to go to various uh, locations throughout the village uh, to, uh, you know, kind of collect their prize. Um, again, anything that we could direct people to uh, a struggling business, uh, some of our other partners uh, we wanted to do. So that was great to see. And we're still doing that. Um, in February, we were teaming with the Village Center uh, for a heart scavenger hunt in honor of uh, Heart Health Month. So um, it's something that, you know, we want to be a good partner. Um, we wanted to utilize our grounds. We were very, very fortunate in that this pandemic came after we opened the new building. Um, I feel bad for some of our partner libraries in the county. Oregon Public Library is in the process of building a new library very similar to ours, but they're in a, a building that's currently a lot like our old building on South Street, and they're still closed just because it's, it's a 10,000 square foot building. You, really can't accommodate that. And we can accommodate what we can accommodate given our large size, but especially the, the 10 acre grounds really served us well um, last spring, summer, and fall. And we started a story walk. So along the creek, there's that uh, recreational trail. And so we installed each month, there's a new picture book. So you can walk with your kids and every few feet, there's a different um, couple of pages from the, the picture book. Um, and that was originally going to be just a one or two month 
thing. And uh, we were delighted by how many people have utilized that service. It's now a permanent fixture. Uh, it, it's continuing even in the winter. And this year, we're actually installing kind of permanent um, structures along that trail so that this is something that doesn't look like we just kind of put it up haphazardly. It's going to be a permanent installation. Um, Similarly, and this is less about the library, but just more about kind of the space that Wanaki has created with the library grounds. Um, starting in April of last year, I was just, I would sit in my empty large library and just watch the, the dozens and dozens of people per hour either utilize the trail, go to the uh, playground, and especially what uh, really pleased me was uh, rediscovering Six Mile Creek, the section of Six Mile Creek, which um, previously, I mean, was always, it was very hard to get to. Um, the library has uh, opened that up and, and we were really delighted to see kids fishing. Uh, we saw people rafting down. Uh, there was uh, one day where I think two young entrepreneurial gentlemen were it looked like a mattress, an inflatable mattress. It could have been a, just a raft, but it but judging by the amount of uh, obscenities that they were yelling when they kept getting stuck, um, they <laughs> uh, they did they didn't weren't expert sailors uh, or rafters. Uh, but seeing kind of just this what was a blighted uh, spot in the center of town really transformed into a hub of activity was really wonderful to see, and it's something that we're continuing to invest in. We'll have more picnic areas, uh, more places. Uh, on the grounds. And, and, and I think it really complements the, the parks that are currently in the village. Um, our study rooms, we are not available and were not available last year. Um, so we really invested in making the outside spaces uh, of the building palatable for people to spend several hours uh, to study, to work remotely, to gather in, in small groups if that's what they chose to do. Uh, so we added uh, shaded structures, we added um, uh, additional Wi-Fi out both in the parking lot and in the backyard. Um, and for the most part, uh, people, while they may have been um, disappointed when we said, no, you can't use a study room, we could at least offer them um, this as an option. And there is a covered area, so in, on rainy days, people did utilize that. When we did reopen um, in June, it was kind of Fortress Library, and it still is sort of like that. There's plexiglass everywhere. Uh, the building was designed originally so that um, staff could kind of wander about and help people um, with, with very few barriers. Obviously, that doesn't work in a, an environment with a respiratory, respiratory uh, pandemic, so um, <laughs> there are a lot of kind of these bunkers that we we had to kind of create on the fly. Um, the uh, Originally, we were really just hoping that people would come in, grab what they wanted off the shelf, and then leave. Uh, we're starting to kind of ease up on that a little bit as the pandemic wears on. Um, one of the big uh, reasons to visit the library, obviously, was a place to hang out and gather and, and relax. Um, unfortunately, the COVID does not lend itself to, to those activities, so we actually pulled most of the furniture, and it was kind of depressing, but um, uh, yeah, this is what it looked like for much of 2020. Uh, we wanted people to kind of, again, attend to their business and, and go. Uh, we are very much looking forward to, once again, allowing people to use their library for however long that they want to use it. Um, last bit of thing that we changed, um, we knew that uh, there was a strong chance that we would return to curbside only. Uh, so last summer, we started planning for the installation of a drive up window. Uh, I kind of regretted not building the building originally with such a feature, but uh, this is certainly in November and December when we were shut down. This was much uh, a much better. Uh, sir, utilize, uh, service than having to trudge, you know, the 50 feet on the sidewalk to deliver to people's cars. And it's not perfect. It's, it's obviously a renovation, but it, it's worked out well. And this is something that's going to stay permanent. 
uh, with the library going forward. It's just one more option that our patrons can utilize going forward. Um, and uh, especially in the last couple of weeks when it was really, really cold, it was very popular. So it was doing exactly what we wanted it to do. Um, and uh, it was, a, I think, a $25,000 project, but most of the money, with the exception of the canopy, structure that you see um, actually was paid for by a federal grant. Um, so the only thing that came out of Wanakee's budget was uh, the little canopy structure. So that was very nice to see. Um, and wrapping up, this was obviously not the first full year that we were hoping for in our building, um, but I'm very proud of how um, easily, not easily, but how well we transitioned when we needed to transition. Um, I live in another municipality that has a public library that has not been open since March of last year. And that frustrates me as a, as a user of that library and as a taxpayer. Um, so it's always been very important to me that we give as much access to this new library to as many people who want to utilize our services as we can. And I think we've done a pretty good job of that. Um, we're one again, one of only two libraries in the county that are open to the extent that we are. Um, and, you know, I just, I, I'm, staff have been wonderful in adapting to what needs to be done to serve people safely. The library board has been very accommodating. Um, and uh, so I, th I think we're in a really good place. And we've learned a lot uh, about kind of how we're going to continue to serve our public. and. Some of the changes that we may have made over the last 12 years are going to be permanent changes. Uh, so ultimately, it's while it's been a hard 12 months, I think we're in a we're a better organization, a better library than we would have been otherwise. So with that, I will turn it over to my good friend Sue McDade. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks so much for having us all here. Um, definitely, you invited. Um, the village team who is in charge of everything that is fun in the village. So um, you got the right people this morning. So I am going to also share my screen. Got it, is it purple? Perfect, okay. So um, community services department is of course, um, my home here in the village. Um, we are um, located at the Wanakee Village Center, um, but our programming happens there and throughout the village as a whole. Oops, hang on a second. So a um, little bit of timeline here as well as just as Eric went through for you. So March of 2020, we, um, we locked the doors and sent everybody home. Um, very similar situation. If you've been in the village center, you know that um, that front lobby is just a hub of noise and people and activity and um, Jeff Skog and myself and Dwayne Stotts are our maintenance mechanic were the only three people from my team that remained on site um, last spring. And it was just really um, a, a very sad time for us because we are 100% everything that we do is with people and being active and programs and activities and special events. So um, it, it was a very challenging time, that is for sure. Um, we spent those first several months canceling things. And I was shocked at how much work it was to stop doing things. We um, think about rentals, park shelters, baby showers, weddings, baseball programs, ice skating lessons, everything that you can think of. Um, hundreds and hundreds of people we had to reach out to and tell them that the things that they were counting on um, weren't going to happen. It was, um, it, was, it was a lot of work and it was really kind of a sad time for us. Um, we did, however, um, one thing that we took great advantage of um, during that time when the building was closed, believe it or not, 
the Village Center has been open for 15 years. And our building maintenance team just did a fabulous job catching up on all sorts of projects, um, building maintenance that we would have struggled to do with people coming and going through our building. So there was a silver lining at that time of year. Um, both the senior center kitchen and the village center kitchen downstairs got new floors. We painted the walls almost throughout the entire building. We refinished our wood floors in the gym, the studio, um, and community room A. So we did make use of that time when we were without customers um, to give the building some love. Then summer came and um, the county allowed us to try to play again. Um, and so we did that as much as possible um, within those guidelines and to stay safe. Um, we did open the fitness center, um, limited capacity, limited times by appointment only. But what we found is that people were just thrilled for the opportunity to come back in. Um, we continue that process actually um, to this day. We did throughout the summer um, play some outdoor sports because of course outdoor activities were um, safer and easier to manage within our guidelines. So we did, um, we had some baseball and some tennis lessons. We weren't allowed to actually play games but we were allowed to offer instructional programs. And so we did that for kids as much as we could um, throughout the summer. And then we really started looking at special events because that is really one of the things that keeps my team super busy. And we couldn't offer great big special events like concerts in the park, want to keep chalk walk, all of those kind of things were not allowed. But we sat down and said, let's, let's try to figure out a way to give people at least parts of what they're yearning for with those special events. And we started the season with chalk walk um, and we turned it into something we called chalk the key, where we encourage people to do their own sidewalk art um, where they were. So in front of their business or at their home or in a park by themselves. And we had kind of a virtual sidewalk chalk contest. Um, and that really gave us some courage to try to see what else we could reinvent of the things that, that are on our plate. Um, we are now continuing, um, special events continue modified programming continues, our fitness center is open um, and is getting busier all the time. Um, people are very um, thankful for the changes that we made to be able to make it a safe place to come and work out. And so more and more um, we're finding our customers coming back. Um, so circling back to special events, I think I would say that this year's Light the Night, um, in collaboration with Rotary Lights, um, was probably one of our biggest successes of the year. Um, so much so that I'm pretty sure that um, Police Chief Kreitzman is not going to let us do it that way again. Um, I don't know how how much you all know about what happened that night, but it was so fabulous that traffic was backed up from Village Park all the way through the roundabout. Um, so people were absolutely looking for a way to get out with their families. And we so enjoyed um, partnering with the Rotary and the light show to make that event happen. Some of the other special events that we've been able to make happen, um, Big Rig Gig takes place in Rip Park every year. Um, we made it a drive through event and um, it, it worked out great, probably better than it would have because it rained like nobody's business. And so the kids and the families all stayed in their car as they drove through Rip Park. Um, the only people that really got drenched was uh, our team as we handed out um, 
pamphlets and construction hats and those kind of things to the cars that came through. We had a virtual Halloween costume contest, light the night. We have hosted some blood drives. Um, American Red Cross, of course, lets us know that giving blood continues to be important, even though um, gathering is not advised. So we are happy to host those things. We had a candlelight hike um, in Castle Creek Conservancy last week that um, in smaller groups of people brought um, almost 200 people to the park for a hike. Our heart hunt, Eric talked a little bit about that with the library um, and some other partnerships that we've got going on. So here's um, some fun pictures that I think really show that um, when we put our heads together and we are as creative as we can be, um, people have still been able to have fun and, and get out and do some, do some things and be with their neighbors in a safe way. Um, so we're super excited to have been a part of that. Um, we also, of course, do lots and lots of youth and adult enrichment programming throughout the year. Um, this is just a really, really small list of things um, that we have been able to make happen, um, but a little at a time, we've been doing our best. Um, the picture here is a um, paint your own barn quilt class. Um, that and cookie decorating, we have found have been the things that we can do socially distanced um, and still people really enjoy it. So we are offering um, a little bit of programming um, as much as possible, again, within the guidelines from public health um, and safely for our, our staff and our participants. So sports is another thing that, of course, our department um, really does a lot of in a typical year. Um, these are some things that we were able to make happen um, over the last year. Everything changed. No games, but we could do skills and drills. And so we did that as much as we could um, and had great cooperation from our volunteers and our parents. Um, and people that help us make these kind of things happen. Um, one, one service that we have offered for years is the rental of cross-country skis and snowshoes. And it's always just been um, a little bit here and there. Of course, when we get a good snowstorm, we were a little bit busier. This year, that has taken off um, like crazy. Every weekend, every pair of snowshoes and skis that we have are rented out. And so families are, are really looking for new ways to get out and be active. So here's some cute pictures um, of kiddos taking part in our programming. Um, I love that little ice skater. In the second picture, um, ice skating was one of the things where everybody um, is okay wearing their mask, helps them <laughs> keep warm. So we've had um, great participation in these kind of programs as well. Health and wellness um, is another one of our focuses. Um, I've touched a little bit on this already. A fitness center and walking track have been open um, by appointment, limited capacity, but it's been working pretty well for us. Um, we typically offer in a session about 50 different fitness classes per week. Um, that has changed dramatically. We're probably down to 15 a week now, and at least 10 of those are virtual. Um, but that has been, you know, pushed us to be creative and try that new um, way to deliver classes, and it's actually been working very well for us. So a lot of people have been taking yoga and Zumba and um, all sorts of different fitness classes right from the safety of their living rooms. So it's been, um, it's been good for us. Um, here's some pictures of um, our fitness center and some of the changes that you can see. Um, masks on by everybody the entire time that they're in the center. Um, lots of individualized cleaning supplies. Um, you can see on the top left picture that every other piece of equipment has been blocked off. 
So we um, are super careful about social distancing guidelines, um, but it's still um, a great place to be able to come and get a workout in if that works for you. Um, parks have been, of course, a place where people can go out and play. And so we found um, our playgrounds and our trails and our park system probably as busy or busier than they ever had been last summer. Um, Wanakee is so blessed with so many beautiful parks throughout the village. Um, and I think our residents really um, realized what a value they have in each one of their neighborhoods as we live through this pandemic. We've done some great projects over this last year. Um, there's my latest picture of the uh, new fishing pier that's underway. Um, what a great addition to the village center pond that is gonna be. Um, a new park shelter is going up in Northridge Park. There's a um, architect's rendering in the middle. We've revamped some tennis courts, new scoreboards in Meadowbrook Park. Um, the playground, the tractor and barn playground is in the new Heritage Hills subdivision that went in last fall. Um, and an adorable little group of um, Girl Scout brownies um, is constructing what's called a little free sled library at the bottom of Water Tower Park Sledding Hill. Um, kind of like a little free book library, but this is a, a sled lending spot. Um, so people have found just wonderful, creative ways to um, make use of our parks and get out and be active. Um, and we just love the opportunity to support that um, any, any way that we can. So thank you so much for having us here today and, and letting us share a little bit about what's been going on um, in our offices over the last couple months. Cindy, your turn. Hello everyone, thank you for um, inviting us um, to share some of what's been going on in our departments this past year. First, um, I'm Cindy Moseman and I'm the Senior Services Director for the Village of Wanakee. And I have to apologize, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation to show you. So um, last March when the um, order came to close the Senior Center, it seemed to happen very quickly. And we probably had about 140 people a day coming into the senior center for a variety of services and activities and programs. Um, our nutrition program um, probably on average had 40 people here for lunch a day. If we were doing a special program, it may have been up to 120 to 160. Dane County deemed that the nutrition program the home delivered meal program was an essential service. So we would continue to serve and provide home delivered meals. Um, what it did though was to figure out how we would do that safely. And they also allowed us to take those folks who came to the meal site, to our dining site at the senior center and add them to the home delivered meal program. So we went from four daily routes delivering meals to five. The, the senior center services do not only take care of Wanakee older adults, but also the village of Dane, the town of Dane, Springfield, Westport, and a little slice of Vienna. So we have a large area that we provide services to. So we had to add a fifth route, which mean, meant finding another volunteer who would, who would pick up a route. I have to say that Wanakee is so blessed in that when we asked volunteers who are mostly older adults, how they felt about continuing to deliver meals during this time, the response was wonderful. And we were the only and continue to be the only senior center in Dane County that has been able to provide meals Monday through Friday continuously. Um, and that's thanks to these wonderful volunteers. The meal program also, when they were delivering the meal, it was giving people a chance to see another person since most of them are isolated in their own homes and apartments. At one point when we worried about um, if people were getting enough food, 
we were allowed to add a second meal a day. So there was about a three month span when besides their noon meal, an, a meal was being delivered late in the afternoon to people. And we felt we couldn't ask those same volunteers to do this. So we asked village staff and we had a wonderful response from village staff who stepped up to deliver that afternoon meal, which says a lot about the folks who work for the village. We also were provided by Dane County some emergency meal boxes of shelf stable food and we delivered that because groceries was of a great concern how people were going to be getting their groceries while they were isolated at home. In all of last year we delivered 23,077 meals to older adults in our service area um, which is up by about 6,000 meals from what we usually do. Another service that the, the Senior Center provides is case management. This service primarily focuses on keeping older adults in their own homes as long as possible um, by setting up services, providing advocacy and resources. So now the case managers had a new task, how they could help their clients get groceries delivered, something that many of them had never done before, how they would get their medications. They couldn't go out to Walgreens or hometown pharmacy and pick them up. How could they get them delivered? And maybe the most important aspect of the case manager's position during the past year was offering reassurance and someone that they could, that the older adults could talk to and share their fears and their anxieties with, because there was a lot of that. Depending on the client situation, if they were if they were alone or they were a couple, the case managers were making phone calls and reaching out to their clients on a daily basis, or at least weekly in those early months. And last year, the case managers we have two of them. They had a total caseload of 362 clients that they provide provide some sort of service to. One of the most important services that they provide on a regular year is when we have Medicare open enrollment and they help many people decide what their Medicare Part D plan will be for the coming year. So now we wanted to continue that service, but how could we go about it in a safe way? And so we devised a plan where we could um, do it over the phone if it was a very difficult problem or the person had difficulty hearing over the phone, we did have them come into the senior center. And we're also equipped with all kinds of plexiglass and hand sanitizer and those sorts of things. And so it, it worked actually quite well. And the case managers assisted 161 people with their MedD plans. And the seniors were very appreciative because this was something they didn't think that would even happen this past year. The Senior Center is also um, someone who provides transportation in multiple ways for the seniors in this area. Um, one of the most important programs is the Retired Senior Volunteer Program, RSVP Driver Escort. This is a program whereby um, volunteers in the community give rides to older adults, primarily to their doctor's appointments. And a lot of people depend on this service. One of the staff members here, it's part of her job to set up those rides. Well, RSVP suspended that service. And that threw a lot of people into another worry. How would they get to their doctor's appointments? And they, they just, we could not do it because it was not a safe environment to put an older adult in a vehicle with another older adult. However, just this past February, um, early in February, they started a pilot program where we had, again, wonderful volunteers who said, yeah, they would feel comfortable doing that with a lot of safety precautions in place. And we could provide rides to people who had essential medical needs, um, such as dialysis, a continuing um, appointment that needed to be done. So dialysis patients, 
those who get infusions. And so we've matched up three of our volunteers with three riders and they've been providing that service and it's gone so well um, with all these precautions in place that they're going to be expanding it in the months to come. They're not opening it up as it was before, but we'll be able to provide more rides to people who are in need. We also, through Dane County funding, have um, transit solutions that comes out here. Normally they would be bringing people in for lunch every day, but instead they're taking people who need to go to the Piggly Wiggly or a pharmacy, Walgreens, a dollar store. They can call, they take one person in their van at a time, but that's been another service that has allowed people as things have gotten a little better to get out of their apartments and um, take care of some of their needs. Starting last June, um, I should say that prior to that, the only people in the senior center were myself and the nutrition site coordinator. All the other staff were working from home and, and they were working from home. The program coordinator and our receptionist, they were reaching out to making phone calls to all the folks who would normally be here throughout the week for different kinds of programming just to make sure that they too were okay and they weren't being forgotten. In June, we added our foot care clinics, which we kept getting calls about, when were we going to add that? We have a registered nurse who provides that service. So after discussing it with her, we figured out there was a way to do it using both of our wellness rooms, setting up a lot of precautions and safety um, procedures. And so we started then in June with our foot care clinics. We have seven of them here a month and people were thrilled to be coming back for that service. We did check after a couple weeks. I went out and talked to people to see, were they comfortable? Did they feel safe coming here? And the response was yes, they really did. We too, when there were some changes to the state orders or the county orders, we did cut back or we did shut down for a short period of time again. Um, along with the foot care, we started our massage therapy service again. Uh, people were in need of that. They were feeling more anxiety and stress than they ever had and the massage was very helpful to them. With these services that we started, people would come into the senior center. They'd have to wait out in our dining area. Their temperature was taken. They were asked multiple questions about their health condition and if they come into contact with others, they have to wear a mask. And of course we practice the social distancing. Since then, we've added a few activities that we could do safely. And this was with the approval of um, Dane County Public Health Department. I have a contact there that I would reach out to and talk about how we could do this. And so we added a Friday movie. We can, right now we're up to having 15. We were only 10. We can spread people out into our, our dining area and, and let people come and watch a movie. And it was very um, wonderful to hear when we started that um, a 90 year old woman who came over from the Canary Row Apartments and said, it was the first time she'd been out to do something fun since last March and she's come to every movie since then. Um, we've been doing some curbside meal pickups. We started that last summer with a couple picnics. We did a Thanksgiving and a holiday meal. Um, people would drive by, the, the meal was packaged in the senior center by some of our volunteers. And for those holiday meals, we had 160 people who drove by. We did one last February, or this, this February, I should say. Um, we did it on, on uh, President's Day when it was only three degrees and staff were taking those meals out. Um, it, it worked out and people are just so happy to have something, something to do. Our next drive-by meal will be on St. Patrick's Day and we're looking forward to that. One of the, the things we really worry about with our older adult population is their isolation and their mental health. Um, you know, folks who were already um, struggling maybe with some type of dementia, this has not helped in any way. The isolation is not good for them. And I think that's why with 
all the precautions in place, being able to allow folks to come back for some activities that can be done safely. Um, we have started our Wednesday afternoon drop in painting class where we probably only have eight people that come. But for those eight people, they are so happy to feel like they're living again. So we are slowly adding those things. And again, only with the precautions that continue to make it to, in, a, in a safe way. I just want to mention one more time that the Senior Center couldn't do what it's been doing without the volunteers that we have here. Those meal deliveries are just, um, they're so appreciated those volunteers help us with that. And when we've done the drive-by meals, the volunteers that have come in to help package those meals, it's, they're happy to be back doing something. And we certainly couldn't do those programs without them. So we'll continue to move forward, reaching out to the older adults. And we just look so forward to the center being open again and the act of, the act of building that it was prior to the virus coming along. <laughs>